My journey to 17 and a half thousand miles an hour begins on the shimmering salt flats of Utah. God's little present to the petrol head. This is the Bonneville Speed Week. People have been coming here for 50 years, risking it all to see how much power they can squeeze from their internal combustion engines. So how good a speed machine is it? Well, the fastest I've ever driven is 186 miles an hour on the German autobahns, and it's very, very scary. It's, it's like sitting in a food blender that's been fired through a cannon into a wall of sound. But now, despite the discomfort and the danger, I want to do better than that. I reckon, with a bit of luck and a fair wind, I might be able to get a personal best. I might be able to go faster than 200 miles an hour. The rules here are really very simple. You must have a slogan on your T-shirt, and you must leave your dental floss at home. But so far as the cars are concerned, pretty much anything goes. The Bonneville Salt Flats is the place where you can come with your hand-built toys and spend the rest of your life turning money into noise. The organizers had said they'd get me a car, and I was very much looking forward to seeing which one of these rakish beasts Not exactly a Ferrari, is it? Looks like a piece of Lego. Look at that front end. That's going to cleave the air like a chest of drawers, that is. Be better off running. Mind you, the people who built it are even less streamlined. Frank is too vast to get in the cockpit, so the driving these days is left to his son, Mikey. So if I go 200 miles an hour, I get to join the 200 <coughs> mile an hour club, don't I? Uh, I don't think so. Really? No. Why not? Because uh, in order to go to, uh, you've got to go 250 to join that club. I thought it was called the 200 mile an hour club. <coughs> oh, it is. But you have to go 250 to 250, join. 250, yeah. Well, that's a bit of a disappointment. Clearly, I needed this place explaining, so I set off in search of someone English. Jeremy. We are in one of our colonies, OK? <laughs> While we're in one of our colonies, um, we've got to expect things a little different. Jim here has spent his entire life savings bringing his ancient Allard to Utah. But it's ingenuity, not money, that'll get him past 200 miles an hour. What is this here? <laughs> well, um, we ran short of metal, Jeremy, and we really desperately needed to do some additions to the aerodynamics to get air into the engine. Yeah. And uh, at 2 o'clock this morning, we were rather restless, and we were just walking down the main street, and you know the big Super 8 signs? One happened to come out of the sky <laughs> onto us, and we felt it was an act of God, and it was intended for us to so use. you've stolen so, their sign. No, it fell accidentally. You stole their sign no. in the middle of the night, and you cut it up. The, you could hit. There was a sort of a flapping noise, <laughs> Jeremy. Show me where it is on the car. Just show me where you're talking. We're, we're trying to gonna... get a Super 8 in the middle, but we can't. That's you have, but you have credited got... them. Look on the you're... side. We've given them a credit. You look down the side. The Super 8 Motel, who kindly gave us their sign. <laughs> it's not all fun and games, though. Is there a rule on how much you can have? You're sitting on the bottom. The engines are stressed to their absolute limits, and when they explode, drivers are showered with burning fuel. People do get killed here. I'd therefore turned up with the sort of fireproof overalls they use in Grand Prix racing. But there was a problem. It's a single layer suit. Um, single layer? The safety people said they were so thin, I may as well race in a light Macintosh. What's the matter with this thing? Is that suit not good enough? This is Formula One stuff. Yeah. Except so Formula One's, they got corner workers with fire extinguishers. Here we got a fire truck in the middle. 
you get this thing on fire, we probably won't catch you till the eight mile. I've got fireproof underwear as well. It brings it from a five to a ten. And what do you want? And, and if you're twenty. Running, yeah, if you're running fuel, we need a twenty. I feel like the kid who uh, forgot his PE kit. I've managed to borrow a helmet from someone called Mike, and then I have this jacket, which would be very useful if you were planning on walking to the North Pole in the middle of winter. It's... Oh, oh that is heavy. Can you try to move forward on me? That's as far as you can go? Yeah. At last, I was ready to go. But the run before mine ended in disaster. Seems the guy who was driving that has been fairly badly burned, so everything's stopped while they take him off to hospital. Seven one six. Oh no, that's me. Now, for all its power, this thing needs a push to get it up to sixty. Then it's a case of hanging on for dear life. Right, foot down, foot half down. Come on, where's the power? Where's the power? Come on. I made a complete pig's ear of the start. Just couldn't get the power down. Every time I, I touched the throttle, it was sliding at the back. And I thought, God, this is going to spin. I'm going to be killed. And then it just vibrates like, like you're going along like that. And you just can't see. I think I got the first gear change right at 6,000. How fast was it? 215. You're kidding? No. 215. 215 miles an hour. Oh, man. Way to go, Jeremy. That's awesome. That's fantastic. Three miles. So at the three mile mark, yeah, that's been 215 that's, miles an hour. You were going uh, 211, the two and a quarter mile. I may have been pleased, but 215 miles an hour is some way short of our 17 and a half thousand mile an hour target. The trouble is, 215 is about the limit for a petrol engine. Sure, this throaty cocktail of aluminium and steel has changed our lives, but it's only expanded our horizons by a few miles. 